Hey, Firebrand X here with another video on OSSC Optimal Timing. This time around we'll also take a look at the masking feature and you can easily use it to mask over scan areas as well as see how well centered your optimal timing settings are. In this video we'll be taking a look at Atari Jaguar and a few games for it. The Jaguar has a unique display system that effectively allows programmers to set whatever horizontal resolution they want and the same with vertical up to 240 lines. There is an interlaced 480 vertical mode, but thankfully it was never used in official games that I know of. Now what makes the Jag quite different from other consoles when doing optimal timing for it is that each game may use a different resolution, but ultimately stays within the exact same pixel clock. By that I mean wider games that have the same pixel aspect ratio are literally wider than the typical 320 res mode that most Jaguar games use. As such, we're able to use the same H sample rate of 422 no matter what game we plug into the machine. In the selection of games I had access to, there were a handful of titles that used 351 horizontal res instead of 320. Now I know 351 sounds like an oddball resolution, and it is, but nevertheless that's what comes out of the RGB output on these particular games and the OSSC is able to handle optimal timing for them. In fact, the maximum optimal timing for 320 mode that the OSSC can handle uh, as of firmware 0.81 is 367 pixels. So for the purposes of making a one-size-fits-all profile, I've decided to set the active pixel area to 360, which when set to line 4x ends up being a nice 1440 by 960. The only minor issue with the Jaguar profiling is sampling phase. There are a couple of games that start on a different phase position, if you will, so I've included that information in the text document for OSSC Jaguar profile in the uh, page linked to in the video description. Alright, let's start off with my personal favorite game on the Jag called uh, Tempest 2000. I've got the JAG outputting the uh, RGB with sync on Luma, which I'm using instead of C-Sync right now because there's some unconfirmed data about the C-Sync on the JAG being TTL level. And the SCART cable I have for it uses C-Sync line without attenuation. So I'm playing it safe and just using the Luma sync until we get someone with a scope to properly test that C-Sync pin under load and get official uh, voltage values for it. Technically, it's a vertical sync pin, but it somehow also doubles as a con uh, composite sync pin, and I don't know how that works. Uh, that's beyond me, so some expert knows, but I don't. Anyway, we'll do my usual thing of going to uh, video LPF and adjusting that first. So let's go to video in processing. You see here it's set to 9, but I have found I have to use 35 megahertz. This may say, seem strange for uh, 240p content, but I found going any lower than this was pinching the video image more out of uh, tune with sampling phase. Uh, so 35 megahertz was the best compromise I could find after spending a good two hours testing different combinations of video LPF and sync LPF. And with that said, we're going to back out and change the sync LPF to 10 megahertz, which again is the best combination I found for fine-tuning sampling phase position. All right, um, now we're going to back out and uh, go down to output options and make sure we're set for 320 by 240 optimal in my line 4x mode that I'd like to use. You see here it's set to generic, so let's switch that over to 320 by 240. And then we're going to back up to sampling options and advanced timing for 320 by 240. And remember I said earlier 422 for H sample rate, so we'll adjust that down to 422. And this is pretty much the standard for every game in the library as far as I know. We'll leave that at 31 and we're going to change that back porch to 24. go and change the active. Remember I wanted 360 for the active.
and that will give us that uh, nice 1440 by 960 resolution. Also, we need to go down to back porch and lower this to 11. And the reason I've loaded, I've lowered it to 11 is because I found in all the games, the tallest ones that use 238 lines always start one line above this position. Um, some games will even change how tall the resolution is from screen to screen, but they will never go below this line I found. Uh, this, of course, may be different on your setup where this bottom line is. And the best game to use for testing vertical position is called Super Burnout. It uses all 238 lines, as does uh, Defender 2000 and some of the game modes for that. But in Super Burnout, you can easily see all 238 lines while the game is paused, so you can find your center position for the Jaguar. With that, let's back out to sampling phase. And on my setup, the vast majority of games seem to hit the sweet spot at 303 degrees, so let's go ahead and go all the way up to that. And there's 303, and it should look uh, pretty well dialed in now. However, uh, I did find two games that needed different phase timing, and they are Rayman at 348 degrees and Skyhammer at 112 degrees. But the vast majority of games, like Tempest here, will uh, look good at 303 degrees, at least on my setup. Now again, your typical uh, H, uh, I'm sorry, sampling phase will be likely different than my 303. But whatever, you, where, whatever it happens to be for you, that's going to be typical for most of the library. But you will find some games, like I say, Rayman and Skyhammer, will need different values, and their relative distance should, from 303 should be the same on yours. So say hypothetically, you could, you know, your typical was like 202, even though that's not really a setting, or 203 rather, then it would be 248 for Rayman and whatever it is for Skyhammer below that. Uh, you get the idea anyway. At any rate, with this set, let's go ahead and uh, play a little bit of Tempest 2000 and just give the first level a try to see how it looks. Um, of course, YouTube is going to compress the, the uh, reds and blues, uh, so it's not going to look as sharp as it does live in person, but I can assure you it looks really nice when you're doing it actually live. And waiting for them to shoot gives you more opportunity for uh, bonuses. And Alright, so that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and turn this off and I'll load up Rayman so you can see the different sampling phase issue like that. Hopefully this will boot up. The Jaguar is finicky. You'll get a red screen of death, if you will, where it uh, will refuse to boot the game and it'll show a red screen and you have to try and keep cleaning the game use air can to blow air out of the console or whatever. Uh, but for a top loader, I noticed the Jaguar is very finicky about loading games. All right. Um, let me go ahead and get to main gameplay so I can show you where adjusting that sampling phase makes a difference. Uh, 
All right. So now, remember it was 348 we needed to dial this in because it's going to be atypical compared to the rest of the library. So we'll raise that up to 348, and that should look nice and sharp, and it does. All right, that's great. I'm going to go ahead and turn this game off and put in Super Burnout so we can start playing around with masking as well as see uh, how our center timing is doing on horizontal and vertical. uses 303. Let's see, C to start, okay, and then now B to start. Ready? So just gonna pause it here because this is a good screen as I said before this game uses the most vertical and horizontal I've seen of any game which is 351 by 238 so let's take a look at how the masking system works on the uh, OSSC and I'll show you some tricks to make it easy to line up and adjust compared to your optimal timing porch settings so, first thing to do is back out of this and go to um, post-processing. And then we'll go up to mass brightness, and we're going to turn this all the way up to 15, which is pure white. Uh, and then that way it'll be a lot easier to see your masking as you're adjusting it so that you know exactly when it's going to approach and line up with the graphics of the uh, active game screen. Uh, so let's see here, um, go up to vertical mask, and if we add one pixel to that, you can see it adds one white pixel to the top and bottom, perfectly encasing it. And now we'll go to horizontal mask, and as we start adjusting that, you can see it getting closer and closer to the game. But since the game is 351, and the masking expects even pic pixel resolutions, you'll notice there's going to be a black line on uh, the left or right side. In this case, it's on the right side. Now, I'm actually going to change my uh, horizontal back porch. So let's back out of this and go up to sampling options and then advanced timing and then go up to back porch. And we're going to shift this to the right and see how I've done that now. Now the black line is on the left side. And the reason I recommend doing this is there's some slight color bleed with the Jaguar RGB output, uh, even in optimal timing, and that bleed is to the right. So by uh, masking the right side instead of the left side like this, we'll chop off any bleed that happens on that right edge. And now we're gonna back out go back down to post-processing, go back up to our mass brightness, and we turn that all the way back down to zero for black, and now you don't even know it's been masked, and any sort of bleed on the right side has been chopped perfectly off, and it just makes for a nicer image, and this is just if you want to use the masking option, you know, that bleed is, is barely noticeable at all, um, but if you're a stickler for a nice perfect image, and if you just want to use masking for other games that have pixel garbage this is this is how you do it just turn it up to white so you can see where it is start moving it in and if your screen is off center then you go to your your H back porch and your V back porch and you just adjust them until they're perfectly centered as they can be and then you just adjust masking accordingly and that's all there is to it really so that's it for the Jaguar. Uh, there's just a couple of games, like I said, that need sampling phase adjustment, but other than that, this optimal timing works great for the majority of the library. Uh, all the details can be read in the text document on my OSSC Profiles webpage, and much appreciated to all my Patreon supporters for making this happen. Uh, in fact, I have to use this month's pledges uh, money to ship back the Jaguar and the GBA Consolizer back to their respective owners 
and uh, to them a big thanks to Randy and Bob for sending these consoles and devices to me for research uh, just to show what we can do for all these consoles. It's a great benefit so I appreciate everyone that sends me uh, their, their loaner systems and everyone that contributes to the Patreon. So until next time, catch you later. Thanks. Uh -huh.